You're watching Unreal Ant Gaming. This is Gohan from Dragon Ball Z. You want to see me turn Super Saiyan? Or should I take it to the next level? I'm also the narrator, too. Next time on Dragon Ball Z, make sure and smash subscribe to Unreal Ant Gaming. With Dragon Ball Super manga chapter number 57 now officially in the history books, Moro and his gang of criminal prisoners continue to rampage all throughout the earth as Moro now looks to enter the battle by inserting himself into the fray following 7-3's beatdown and with our heroes now faced with the task of battling Moro and his right hand Sagambo, Goku is desperately trying to make his way back to earth in quick enough fashion after learning that everyone's key is now beginning to steadily drop. And with Goku now rushing towards making his way to Earth, the question is, are our heroes in over their heads by taking on Moro without Goku or Vegeta, or is it possible for our heroes to hold out long enough before they arrive? As once more before we begin, if you are new to this channel and have a love and passion for all things Dragon Ball and anime related, then make sure to go on ahead and smash that subscribe button and turn on all notifications by clicking on the bell icon to never miss a single upload on this channel, as well as giving this video a big thumbs up by smashing that like button down below if you guys are loving the direction of the Dragon Ball Super manga and cannot wait to see this be animated within the actual anime itself. And if of course you guys want to catch up and check out all the best from the Dragon Ball Super manga, then you guys can go on ahead and check out the official Dragon Ball Super manga playlist located down in the description box below to where there you guys will be able to find all the latest and best from the actual Dragon Ball Super manga. So if you want to catch up and find out more information on what's been going on, then be sure to go on ahead and check out that playlist located down below. As we kick off the Dragon Ball Super manga chapter number 57 special entitled Everyone's Battle, with Moro having to be shown standing on top of his ship and having to be very observant of the battle happening below with Sagambo next to him, when looking at Moro's face, he doesn't seem to have any cause for concern, he doesn't seem to be upset, he doesn't seem to be shaken or rattled, but rather amused at the fight happening down below, as elsewhere over on the lookout we get to see how Bulma, Chi Chi, and everyone had arrived in having to meet up on the lookout itself and the reason being is because Bulma had set up these drones that is specifically programmed in watching the battle from down below as she only then went along to tell everyone hey guys these monitors are linked to drones I sent out to check out the battles with Pilaf and the gang having to come and oh you've done it again ma'am so cool and with Chi Chi walking over she went along to comment so I can watch my little Gohan in action and as she observes the monitor she's very disappointed in seeing Krillin as Chi 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 then commented, ugh, this one's just airing the Krillin show because this is interesting. Chi Chi actually wanted to see her son in battle without even caring about him being at work or school. Very interesting. Props goes out to Chi Chi on this one. Now, as Krillin is shown launching multiple Destructo Discs at Yumba, what Yumba ends up doing is basically balling up his body and having to roll directly at the Destructo Discs themselves. And as the Destructo Discs begin to bounce off, Krillin is baffled because this never happened before, at least not for an individual that was able to turn their mass into something to where energy, specifically ones that come from a Destructo Disc, are easily able to bounce off of from. And as we get to see how Yumba finally unrolls himself in kicking Krillin directly in the face, Yumba is then shown having to beat Krillin down so bad to where at this point Krillin just feels like a punching bag to Yumba because Yumba is very unrelenting in his approach and having to really go as far as to inflict mass massive damage onto Krillin, and once Yumba ends up knocking Krillin down onto the ground, he steps forward in this crater to acknowledge the fact that this person is now defeated. Yumba is the man, right? Yumba stands tall as the victor, or at least so he had assumed, because only then we get to see how Krillin pokes his little arm out and he begins to twiddle his fingers around, sort of like he's directing something, and that's exactly what he ended up doing, because as Yumba looks down, he's beginning to question as to what exactly Krillin is doing until only then, he looks behind him in having to be met then 
with a stray Destructo disc heading right for him, and with Yumba having to be quick enough to move out of the way, what ends up happening is that this Destructo disc actually ends up lacerating Yumba's face, so much so that it creates a massive gash near his cheek, and Yumba is infuriated because he wasn't expecting for Krillin to have the cognitive awareness to control such an attack, and with Krillin then leaping out of the crater, what he ends up doing is controlling all of the Destructo discs that Yumba had sent flying out in the distance, and with Krillin having to maneuver them around in controlling their overall direction, Yumba's trying to figure out what to do, because now this is posing a real threat to him in the fact that he got cut once and he's not trying to get cut again. So what Yumba ends up doing is he quickly launches himself up in the air in having to deflect all of the blasts because then his initial strategy was for the Destructo Discs to end up hitting Krillin instead. And that's exactly what ends up happening because the second Yumba turns around to acknowledge the fact that he had defeated Krillin, we observe how all of the Destructo Discs end up going right through Krillin, sort of like a ghost, right? And Yumba doesn't know what the heck is going on because he originally thought that this was Krillin. He thought that he had him right where he wanted him and that this fight was over, but instead, Krillin ended up using the after image technique to quickly escape being slashed by his own attacks. And once Krillin ended up getting right behind Yumba, he only then went along to tell him, speak for yourself. That's my after image move. Try to keep it in mind as he lets loose a massive Kamehameha which sends Yumba flying down onto the ground with such force that Yumba only then is essentially defeated. He can't move, he seems to be immobilized. As Krillin wipes his forehead, he only then comments, Phew! Somehow I pulled it off. You guys can handle him from here, right? As the patrollers respond, yes. We're responsible for escorting this one back to the galactic prison. And with Krillin overhearing screams in the forest, he knew that Master Roshi was in trouble, so he went along to comment, Ah, now what? And as he ventures out into the forest, Master Roshi comes flying out through the trees as he's clutching onto his face and commenting, Ow, ow, ow! Those girls are more than I just bargained for. Damn it, I found some tough ones. Won't even let me grow them. I, I mean, my attacks ain't hitting. As Krillin went along to ask, You okay, Master Roshi? As Roshi comments, Ah, Krillin, we gotta stay focused. And as the females emerge, they're angry. As they went along to comment, You've got some nerve pulling that on us, you old creep. Hope you're ready for payback. And with Roshi and Krillin standing their ground, Krillin went along to comment, Muten Roshi. I admit they've got powerful chi, but if you use that power you showed us against Jiren, they shouldn't be giving you trouble. As Roshi replies, um, right you are Krillin, but to tap into that power, I gotta clear my mind. Ah, maybe my mind's possessed by some kind of wicked energy. And with Krillin squinting his eyes because he knew that Roshi was BSing, he only commented nah. I think I know what's going on here. As we only then elsewhere go to Tien and Chaozu, they seem to be battling against the Metal Man that seems to be also similar to Megeta from Universe 6, and Tien is going all out. Tien is really trying to bring the fight to this individual as he ends up clocking him right in the chest. Tien only then ends up stumbling back and holding onto his hand and commenting, Tah! What's with this one? As Chaozu responds, your punch had no effect, Tien, with one of the guards commenting, Bikora is a member of a race of metal men made entirely of a metallic substance. As Tien goes on to ask, a metal man? Just like Megeta from Universe 6. Didn't he have a weakness of some sort? As Chaozu comments, eh, insults! Insult him! That's his weakness, Tien! As Tien comments, huh? insult him because of course just like Megeta that's his only weakness as we only then go back to the lookout Dende goes on to comment so so insults are effective against metal men with Bulma commenting is Tien even capable of insulting someone and with the battle taking place with Tien he's trying to evade the metal man as best as he could as he only then comments uh, okay uh, here I go, you, you rockhead! But this has no effect, as Chaozu comments, um, Tien, a metal man's head is always harder than a rock, with Tien commenting, uh, right, in that case, you half-ton tubby! And this really isn't working, as Popo went along to comment, a half-ton is only a thousand pounds, a metal man weighs far more than that, that doesn't qualify as an insult, so Tien isn't really good at insulting people, as he only then is trying to evade the metal man by also commenting, darn it all! What counts as an insult against him? With Chaozu then having to take the lead, he then went along to comment, Hey Octopus! Yo! Woo! Does the truth hurt? 
then give me your best shot. And with the Metal Man having to redirect his attention, that's exactly what he ends up doing, because he ends up charging Chao Tzu directly as Chao Tzu then went along to shout, you half-witted hunk of scrap metal, and this for some reason ends up affecting the Metal Man so much so that he ends up just going shapo po po and dropping down onto the ground. And with Tien looking on, he went along to comment, you, you did it, Chao Tzu. With Chao Tzu commenting, you suck at insulting people, Tien. With Tien apologizing, this was the end of Bikora because with Chao Tzu taking the lead, he essentially won the fight for Tien. As Bulma went along to comment, they did it. Everyone's doing great. As Oolong went along to comment, I really don't get it. These guys are winning too. That old freak had to resort to drastic measures to keep his stupid line in check. And as we go back to Roshi, that's exactly what he ended up doing was blindfolding himself in not seeing these females. So instead, he wanted to reserve himself to only use his instincts to fight. As Roshi then went along to comment, I still got a read on you gals' moves even when they're out of sight. So Roshi is really doing well, way better with a blindfold on than how he originally was with his eyesight because he couldn't really focus and in traditional fashion Roshi is really beginning to show off his skill and techniques as he's flipping them away he's knocking them back as one of them went along to comment what's this old farts deal I never ran across someone who got stronger with their eyes covered as Roshi comments listen gals when you stray from the path of goodness you're bound to pay for it someday so quit being all evil okay Head back to that galactic prison and just be grateful there's a place where you get to alone as one of the girls comments as freaking if we're never going back to the slammer. As the ringleader looks back, she only then went along to comment, you know what it's time for, as the other two agree, only then Krillin went along to ask a uh, special move, as Oolong responded, no, 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 th th this is bad. This is real bad, Bulma. As Bulma went along to ask, what's the problem, Oolong? Oolong then commented, those three lady convicts, they went infused. As Bulma asks, come again? Because she couldn't believe it. Because on the battlefield, we get to see how these three pretty girls ended up fusing into this monstrosity. As this towering giant lingers on, Roshi went along to comment, y yikes. Th that one ain't cute at all as Krillin responded w we're in trouble now and in trouble they were because what this female ended up doing was knocking Krillin out first by having to punch him directly in the gut which caused him to go flying out in the distance as she only then redirected her focus at Roshi in knocking him away by kicking him in the face it's only safe to assume that her power had multiplied tenfold being the fact that they did this triple fusion and with Krillin and Roshi really being in a tough spot Spot, we get to see how once Roshi ended up getting knocked back, Krillin went along to comment, Mutin Roshi! With Roshi commenting, she sure packs a punch, and Bulma's upset because she went along to ask, seriously? They're losing? So everyone on the lookout is basically watching on as Yamcha's having a difficult time, Tien's having a difficult time, Roshi and Krillin are having a difficult time. With Eska noticing that Moro's ship is now beginning to descend, he went along to then cry out, Dende! Moro's spaceship is on the move! With Dende asking what? He's really making for the sacrifice! As Moro's ship is descending lower and lower, we get to see how Moro and Sagambo actually end up exiting the ship and finally falling down onto the planet itself. As we go back to Piccolo, Gohan, and Jocko along with the androids, we get to observe how the androids are waging battle against Shimoreka and 7-3 as Piccolo and Gohan went along to comment, Yes! Rectum number 17 and 18, wrap this up quickly, and that's exactly what they're doing because 18's whipping Shimoreka, 17 is whipping 73, and as 17 is beating up 73, he only went along to comment, This is over. Now, what Android 17 ends up doing to conclude his fight against 73 is using his own energy to blast behind him and sort of using that somewhat like a boost to propel him forward with such force, and with such force it is because what Android 17 ends up doing is double stomping 7-3 with such force in his chest that 7-3 is essentially defeated. He can't hold his own against 17 and to close things off what 17 ends up doing right after having to stomp down on his chest 
is with one single kick is he ends up Spartan kicking 7-3 so far out in the distance that this is it. This is game, set, match, a checkmate for Android 17 because at this point, this is a victory. 7-3 could not hold his own against 17 and 17 being the MVP of the TOP came in clutch by completely eviscerating 7-3. And with 7-3 falling behind, 17 went along to comment, eat this. As Gohan and Piccolo are proud and commenting, he did it. Out of nowhere, Moro ends up popping up in front of 7-3 and stopping his fall by grabbing him by the head. With everyone looking on, we get to see how Moro is holding 7-3 by the skull directly in front of him in one of my personal favorite shots for this entire manga. And Moro is smiling. He has this very sinister grin on his face with Jocko shouting, it's Moro! Moro finally decided to crash the party. And with Piccolo looking on, he only then went along to comment, so he's the big boss, because keep in mind, Piccolo and Gohan have never seen Moro before, and as Moro looks on over to 7-3, he only then comments, ahem, 7-3, I told you not to employ my abilities so casually. As Shimoreka comments, so, so sorry, but we didn't stand the chance otherwise. And with Moro overhearing this, he only then comments, there will come a time where I require his power once again. As he tosses 7-3 on over, he only then comments, help him to recover. As Shimoreka agrees in telling him, yes, yes, my lord, in basically sparing him and giving him a chance to live on and carrying the fight for a later time, and with Sagamba rushing on over, he only then tells Shimoreka, get him back to the ship, Shimoreka. With Shimoreka agreeing and taking off, 17 went along to comment, hey, should we really let that one get away? As Piccolo chimes in, so this is Moro. Yeah, he's on another level. As Gohan comments, that that's some horrifying chi he's got. Like the death cries of countless people. It's pure evil. As Jocko went along to respond, probably because he stole the energy from everyone he's killed. And with Moro now acknowledging everyone on the battlefield, he only then comments, anyhow. With Gohan absolutely shook, Moro then continues, it seems as though those two aren't here. With Gohan commenting, oh, they'll show. As we speak, my dad and Vegeta are getting strong enough to beat you. So until then, protecting the earth is our job. And with Moro responding by laughing in Gohan's face, he only then went along to respond, you don't lack for boldness, you calm yourself. I'm in high spirits, as Gohan asks, why is that exactly? With Moro responding, because I had the good fortune of coming upon this planet. There aren't many out there teeming with so many high energy individuals. What a waste it would be to consume all of you at once. How should I go about preparing this dish? With 18 responding, this, what a creep. Sagambo ends up walking on over and asking Moro, Lord Moro, why don't you allow me to cook these ones for your liking? As Moro asks what, Sagambo responds, Sagambo's Galactic Bandit Brigade isn't known for slinking off after taking a beating. And with Moro having to take a second to think about it, he only then responds, huh, go on? As Sagambo responds, thank you, Moro only then tells him, but leave them alive. I intend to snack on their life energy. And with Sagambo agreeing and telling him understood, he basically wants to soften them up. He wants to have revenge for what they did to Shimoreka in 7-3. But right before Sagambo enters the battle, Moro only then goes on to tell him, here, another gift for you. As he raises his fingers and then pointing on Sagambo's back, he ends up giving him tremendous amounts of power because Sagambo ultimately changes in a very Bojack slash Broly slash jeering kind of way. His entire shirt gets blown off, he's all muscular and he's all pumped up, and Jocko goes on to cry out, oh crud, because he knows at this point that Moro had given Sagambo now tremendous amounts of power. As Gohan went along to ask, huh? His chi just spiked. As Jocko responds, Ka, I guess Moro can portion out energy to his goons. With Sagambo then commenting, ha, thank you, Lord Moro. As Moro only then told him, 
go. And Sagambo just rushes on in, and the first person that Sagambo ends up rushing is none other than Android 17. And Sagambo ends up punching 17 with such force that of course 17 ends up defending himself, but 17 is really, really getting pushed back because with Sagambo having to drill 17, he's pushing him back with more force and more force and more force to the point where 17 ends up actually crashing directly into his sister as 18 cries out, watch out! So now 18 is trying to push her brother forward while Sagambo is trying to push them back. And Sagambo is adding more force and more force because then both of the androids end up crashing directly into Piccolo and Gohan as Piccolo went along to comment that that's not good, help them! With Jocko, Piccolo, and Seventeen now having to try their best to hold off Sagambo, I really love this one shot of Gohan, Piccolo, Seventeen, Eighteen, they're all trying to push Sagambo back because this dude comes off like a tank, he's like a brute, and poor Jocko's clinging onto Sagambo's leg, and Sagambo gets really irritated because then what he ends up doing is smoking everybody, he unleashes a massive roar to where he he further goes on to hold on to Gohan and Seventeen's skull and kind of uses them as weapons to shoo away everyone else. What I really enjoy here is seeing how Sagambo ended up tossing Seventeen and Gohan in the air and then what he ends up doing is proceeding by slamming both of them by the face directly down onto the ground with such tremendous force to where Seventeen and Gohan now are down on the ground. As Jocko went along to comment, yeah, that's nuts. Definitely not the Sagambo I know, as Piccolo chimes in and commenting, of all the- nah, we still have to deal with this one before Moro? Because they know that right now they're all at a disadvantage with such power coming from Sagambo, and with Tien and Chaozu flying on by, they seem to be looking for all the other fighters, as Chaozu went along to comment, down there Tien, as they only begin to spot Yamcha who is now in trouble, there is a lizard-like creature that ends up knocking Yamcha directly into Tien, as Tien went along to ask, are you okay? With Yamcha commenting, Ugh, thanks for that. As the individual then went along to comment, I am the advisor to Sagambo's Galactic Bandit Brigade, and I am a cut above those other lowly convicts, basically confirming that he is one of the strongest, and with Tien and Yamcha only then getting into fighting position, Yamcha went along to comment, he's trouble. As we go back to the forest, the giant female seems to be stumbling around because she's looking for Roshi and Krillin, and with Roshi and Krillin hiding, Roshi went along to comment, yeesh, this old body of mine is not gonna last. As Krillin comments, damn it, we're gonna lose, but at least I'm gonna go down swinging. I sure hope you notice this last burst of power and come running, buddy. As deep in space, we get to see how the narration goes on to comment far, far off in space as Goku is really trying to find his way back home, but he's having such a difficult time because he doesn't know where Earth is. As Goku comments, am I there yet? Jeez, pretty sure this is the right way, and he could feel and sense that Gohan's in trouble, Tien's in trouble, Yamcha's in trouble, Seventeen's in trouble, Piccolo's in trouble, but he can't seem to detect where they are as Goku comments, I can just barely feel it, they're chi down on earth, and with Goku desperately trying to use instant transmission, he can't seem to lock on as he comments, oh, no good, their chi is just sprinting by the second. I can't get a solid hold. As Krillin takes it upon himself to leap on top of a mountain, he only then begins to raise his power level up even more, with Goku then commenting, Ah, oh, I know that she! It's Kuririn! Woo! I found it! I found Earth! Because Krillin did exactly what Gohan did in ROF and increased his power so much so to where Roshi looks on and having to notice this and crying out, Cut it out, Krillin! Your power's not gonna do us a lick of good! And with Krillin looking on, Roshi then continued, We're in for it now! As the massive individual only then comes swooping on in, this is Krillin's final stand. This is it because he tried to do whatever he could to hold his own as this massive female is about 
about to charge right in, as only then, out of nowhere, we observe how the giant fusion of all three of these females that were combating Krillin and Master Roshi end up getting sent flying back so far out into the distance that Krillin can't believe what had just happened because the impact that was created from the initial blow that caused her to go flying back was with such force that essentially her eyes rolled behind the back of her head and she appears to be lifeless on the ground given the fact that she was about to kill Krillin or at least assumingly so and because of this there was an action created that ended up saving Krillin and Master Roshi and this comes from none other than Goku finally having to arrive on planet Earth which bear in mind this means that Goku came to Earth and is going to insert himself in the battle against Moro before Vegeta and with both Krillin and Master Roshi completely baffled we see Goku just standing there in all his glory ready to take on whatever is going to be headed towards his direction with Krillin so happy to see him he went along to comment G Goku with Goku looking back he only then responded sorry I got a bad habit of showing up late, Krillin, as only then the manga chapter special then comes to a close. Now, the next edition of the Dragon Ball Super Manga, which will be Dragon Ball Super Manga chapter number 58, will be available on March 20th, and only then can we speculate that Goku's going to arrive on the battlefield where Sagambo and Moro are to assumingly engage against either or, perhaps both if given the opportunity, but without Vegeta being there, I want to get your thoughts in the comment section below as to how you guys believe Goku's going to fare up against Moro and Sagambo now, and what I really enjoyed about this is the fact that we get to see the level of desperation come from our heroes because as soon as we had the opportunity in seeing Moro and Sagambo touch down, with Moro handing on over some energy to Sagambo in allowing him to stand up to 17, Gohan, Piccolo, 18, and Jocko, is the idea itself so terrifying to know the fact that with Moro having to sit back and just casually watch, our heroes are really struggling against someone like Sagambo who is Moro's second in command, and being the fact that Moro is keeping Shimoreka and 7-3 off to the side, we can only further speculate that 7-3 is going to come back at some given point to assist Moro and Sagambo in battle. As to when that is, we don't know, but what I also want to know from you guys is how do you guys think Goku's going to handle Sagambo and Moro being the fact that Vegeta is not there, and how do you guys feel personally about Vegeta in all of this? Because in my opinion, judging based on what's happening right now in the manga, it's safe to assume that by the end, Vegeta just might be the one to show up at the very last minute of this battle and get the victory over Moro. That's my assertion in all of this because if Goku somehow can't get it done, but he's able to inflict massive amounts of damage with his Ultra Instinct to Moro and Sagambo, 7-3, and Shimoreka, then do I only believe that once a fresh Vegeta ends up arriving from Planet Yardrad, are we only then going to see Vegeta unleash chaos on Moro and Sagambo following the events of what happened on New Planet Namek. So by the end of all of this, what I also enjoyed is how the other Z fighters had a moment to shine. Roshi had a moment to shine. Krillin had a moment to shine. Yamcha had a moment to shine. Tien and even Chaozu. Chaozu being the one to defeat the Metal Man had a moment to shine. Seventeen had a moment to shine. Gohan had a moment to shine. So every single person, including Goku and Vegeta respectively during this entire arc had a moment to shine. So nobody out there can really complain that much about our heroes or at least specific characters not having moments because so far in this arc, everyone's had a moment and from what it looks like, now it's time for the villains to have their moments before the big finale. So in the end, I want to get your thoughts in the comment section below about who you guys believe is going to take the victory. Is it Goku? Is it going to be Vegeta? Is it going to be somehow Majin Buu waking up with the Daikaio? I want to get your comments in the comment section below as to how you guys think this is going to end again. Thank you all so much for your time. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, then be sure to give this video a big fat thumbs up by slapping that like button down below. The like goal for this video is going to be 10,000 likes. So if we can smash out 10,000 likes, that would be incredible, guys. This manga so far has been amazing. It's been really, really good. The villain actually feels like a villain, but if you guys think differently, and if you're really not feeling this arc as much as, let's say, the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie, or the Tournament of Power arc, or 
Goku Black or whatever the case may be, then I want to get your thoughts and your complaints on this arc and why it could be or at least what you think could make it better down in the comment section below, guys. Thank you all so much for your time. Follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. All those links will be located down below. I appreciate your time. Tune back in for more. Again, the next manga chapter for DBS will be available on March 20th. Don't forget that we're going to have leaks and a summary and spoilers and so many other things along the way. So I appreciate your time. Thank you all so much again, and I'll be seeing you all down in the comment section below. Have a great day, everybody. Peace. And the quick little reminder before you guys go, if you guys are unaware, I do have a second gaming channel located down in the description box below. So be sure to head on over to Unreal Royale and hit that subscribe button along with turning on all notifications as to there, you guys will find all different kinds of gaming content that you will not get to find on Unreal and Gaming, titles and video games such as Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty, Gears of War, Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle, Dragon Ball Z Legends, Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkai, G3, Minecraft, Blair Witch, and many other retro games on that channel. So if you guys are into gaming, then make sure you guys subscribe over on Unreal Royale. I want to thank you all so much for your time, and I'll catch you all in the next one. This is the Galactic Emperor of the Universe, and of course I'm here to tell you to subscribe to Unrelent Gaming. Also follow Unrelent Gaming on these social media platforms to stay connected at all times. And if you don't, then very soon you will all be dead! <laughs> oh, did someone say unrelent gaming? Oh my god. The fuck, Zabon? Put on some clothes! Well, why don't you put on any clothes? What? I don't need clothes! Jesus Christ, that's huge! <laughs> what, Broly? Freezer. Uh oh. Prepare to die! <laughs> <laughs> that I'm the biggest Unreal Ed Gaming fan. This is my moment. I'm a part of his notification squad. Universe 7 can have all the fun. I just want the food. And don't forget to leave a comment on this video. Show some love for the best community on YouTube. <laughs> K -k 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 -k